Visit SailRight.com for your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Kenny with Sims Upholstery, and today we're going to show you how to make your enclosure for uh, both your doors on a Yamaha YXZ. In this first chapter, we'll show you how to pattern for your window. Okay, so you want to remove mirrors or obstructions from your side-by-side -side railings where you're going to put your marks. So you need to mark where that's going to be. Okay, so now I'm just going to tape off where I'm going to have my cover. So I'm basically going to just follow this little line here, and that's where my edge is going to be for my cover. And I'm going to put mask down first. And then after that, I'm going to cover the mask with double tape, double sided tape. Oops, that's not the line I wanted to follow. Kenny is going to place masking tape all the way around the perimeter of where he wants his window to go. Okay. So now we're just going to run double-sided tape along this part only because I'm going to drape from the top. This mask is just showing me where I'm going to have my pattern. Now we'll apply double-sided tape all the way along the ridge of our door. Okay, and that's where I'm going to stop. There's actually going to be a little bit of a gap here for airflow. This is going to guard any mud coming up anyways. Okay, so now we're going to drape from the top and tape up the top this scrim and then use the double-sided tape at the bottom to help get the bottom part of our pattern. So basically drape and tape is what you're going to do here. So we want to make sure that we're covering the whole distance well before we start to tape. So I'm just going to tape this to the top of the side-by-side. -side. You can run double-sided tape along here and try to do it that way, but I think that this way is much easier because you can just use the lip of your side-by-side -side top to help guide where your pattern is going to be. And you just want to make sure this is going to sit flat with no wrinkles or as little wrinkle as possible. Okay, so I'm just going to make some cuts here to help free up this patterning material. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this part of the door right now since it's wanting to be a little problematic. And I'm even going to take off what's draping extra here. That way there's not so much weight on it as I'm pulling it down. So you want to make sure over here that you have a decent amount for where you're going to have a snap over here. Okay, so now that I've got it nice and flat everywhere, I'm going to carefully remove my double-sided tape strip, the protectant on it, so I can use the double-sided tape. Don't just yank it off quickly or you're going to have problems. So I'm just going to start from the middle here, kind of. And go to the outside to this one side. That way you're smoothing everything out to the edges. Same thing here. Carefully remove it. And start from the center to the edge. Okay, so that's stuck down. So now we're ready to mark everything. And then after that, we're going to figure out where we're going to put all of our Velcro. You need to be leery of all these things that are going to be in the way when you're doing your Velcro. This way. Okay, so now I'm going to make the lines for my pattern. <clears throat> On the post here, you kind of want to stay to the outside of the post or the outside of the line. Tape line, basically. OK, 
Okay, so now you can basically just use this edge. See how easy that is to follow that edge? Not everybody has this, but if you do, it makes it a lot easier. I'm just gonna connect this right here. Okay, now we're gonna follow this snap line. Keep it to the bottom of that also. We're gonna make a mark where the door is gonna be because it does kind of a weird thing here if you press in. I'm gonna kind of tell where the top of the door is here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna mark spots where I want my Velcro on this. And you need to be leery about what's behind things. And I'm also gonna mark, this was where my mirror was. And you're gonna try to make this as gradual as a dip as you can. I'm just gonna mark an M for the mirror. And then now I'm gonna make my spots for the Velcro. So we'll do one right here. I'll do one on the other side of the mirror here. One before this rib or this support. And then we need to go past this for this one. And there's actually even something right here behind it. So we actually need to be right about here. Make sure you peek behind your pattern if you don't know where things are. We'll continue to place marks for our Velcro yeah. all the way along that top edge. Being sure to avoid any right obstacles and placing the Velcro in locations that will prevent the window from fluttering when in motion. Okay, so our Regal Light pane material or vinyl glassware basically is only 54 inches wide. So I need to measure from the farthest point of this because basically this we're going to cut a piece of glassware that's going to be exactly 54 inches wide. But we're actually even going to come in an inch to 53. Okay, so I'm actually going to mark 53 inches instead of 54, because I'm gonna come in an inch for this back panel. So now, you can actually just follow the diamonds up. And down. And that helps you make some facing there. And then we're gonna put two inch facing on the top here. And then down here is gonna be three inch for where we're gonna have our snaps. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold my acrylic up here to get my two inches of facing up here. We'll mark the two inch facing all the way around the top of our side by side, and then three inch facing all the way around the bottom. When we get to the mirror location, we'll still measure the two inches from our outside line because there won't be a snap or Velcro in that location. Now we'll mark three inches along the bottom edge where the door is for our facing strip. Okay, and then I'm also going to take some of these points back and actually make them smoother for my binding even around pretty much every point. Okay, so basically I'm going to make a preliminary zipper line here just so I know what direction my zipper needs to travel. You need to keep in mind that if you have a suicide door like on a Polaris, certain models of that, they open this way instead of the normal way the door opens like this one. So if you have a suicide door, you have to run your zipper basically from here to here. We are going to run ours like this. You need to try to make it a gradual arc because that's what your coil zipper is going to want to do. And this is just a preliminary line. It may be wider than this. I'm just showing myself what my zipper is going to do before we actually cut the pattern. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm actually just going to cut out everywhere where I've marked what's well, even still up. And this also just kind of gives you a good idea of where everything's going to land. You can make sure that you're correct behind it because sometimes it's hard to see behind the patterning material. Kenny will cut all the way around the perimeter of our pattern and our pattern will be complete. 
In this next chapter, we'll be cutting out the facing. Okay, so now I'm gonna mark the outside of the pattern where the window is gonna be. <clears throat> the window is just gonna be the same size as the whole unit, and then we're just gonna sew facing onto it, black facing. So I'm just gonna start marking where that's gonna be. Make sure you mark all your hash marks. And the hash marks are gonna be for your Velcro and so that you can keep your sewing straight on both sides of the facing. Okay, so where the door is here, I'm just gonna carefully fold this over to where I can see this line here. And our door does this little curve thing, so I wanna make a note of that and then note of where it's gonna stop there at the top. So before you cut out the facing, <clears throat> You need to make sure that you're on the inside of the window here for it, which we are a good inch. So I'm ready to cut the pattern out now. So I'm just gonna cut out along my line now. Now we'll just cut around the perimeter of the glass and we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, so here's our pattern now. Everywhere where I have my Velcro hash marks, I'm going to make the slightest little triangle cuts here. You do not want to make these very deep. These are just so I can see where these hash marks are after I put my facing on. Okay, so for the facing, we are going to use Stamoid Top. This is obviously the black color. This has a right side and a wrong side. I have the right side up right now, which is the smoother side. This is going to be the inside. You don't see this. Okay, so now we're going to make the marks where our facing is going to be. And I'm going to do the outside of it first. You can actually do strips, three inch strips and two inch strips if you wanted to. And you could save a lot of material that way. But we're actually just going to cut out the whole pattern and sew it on both sides and mirror it so that both sides are covered with the facing. So I'm just going to do the outside perimeter first. We'll trace all the way around the perimeter, being sure to transfer our hash marks to the inside of our pattern. Now that I have my border on the outside done, what I'm gonna do is cut out the inside of this for my facing. So I'm just gonna cut along the line here. I'm gonna kind of make this smoother here. It's just easier to sew. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay this back out where my hash marks were to help keep it straight. And where I knew my door was gonna be, which is right here. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the door on the other pattern as well mark where this is going to about be. Okay, so now that I've got this laid down, I'm going to mark the inside of the facing, staying just inside that line. We'll mark all the way around the inside of this pattern, then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut around the inside of the border here for our facing. And after I cut this out, what I'm gonna do is flip it and that's basically mirroring it, and that's going to be the inside of it.
Okay, so for the outside ones, the outside of our facing, we're going to cut on the inside of the line. And you want to make sure that you do your little cutouts for your hash marks here, too. We'll cut around the perimeter of the facings and then cut those notches for our hook and loop. Okay, so that's what the facing is going to look like with the window. So now we're going to take this pattern, and you need to make sure that all your little hash marks are cut out, because when you flip it, then you're going to use these hash marks to make your other pattern. Okay, so what we need to do now is flip this to get the other side of it. When flipped, our facings will have the right side or the outsides facing one another. And we're just trying to get this to lay as flat as possible everywhere. It looks like that right there is going to be okay. We'll push it down without creating problems. So we're going to do the outside of the perimeter first. And I'm just going to mark my hash marks right now. That's also going to keep it from moving around some. And then up here at the top, I'm actually just going to tape it down with masking tape. So I'm going to make my mark first right there. And then I'm just going to tape this down over the hash mark so it doesn't move on me. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm just going to make about a one inch mark. One, one and a half inch mark, I guess and tape it down there. Okay, so that should stop it from shifting. You can tape it on the corners if you wanted to, but we'll just start with that. You're just gonna run your pencil along the inside of this line as close as possible. You want this to be as close a pattern as possible. Now I'm just gonna do the inside of the border the same way. We'll also add our hash marks to this panel. Okay, so we've got our border everywhere for the other side of our facing. So we're just gonna take this off. And repeat the cutting process then. Coming up, we'll be basting the facings and zipper to our window. Okay, so since when I'm laying down my facing, I'm a little bit over with my window you're just going to want to trim some of that off very carefully. And that's about the only spot that I really saw a problem there. But you just want to check around your edges to make sure that your windows on the inside of your facing. Okay, so now I'm going to take quarter inch seam tape and just run it along the edge everywhere of my window pane. So when we get the end of our glass right here, we're just going to run this straight down the side of the glass. Okay, so I'm just going to remove some of my seam tape and actually start finding my hash marks here and sticking my facing. Take your time when you're doing this and make sure all of the hash marks line up with the ones in the glass below. We'll continue around the perimeter making sure the edges match up as we go. Okay, well, we're laying down the window's end here. I'm just trying to get this to lay as flat as I can. Okay. And that's the front side. So now we're going to flip it over. And we're going to run the tape along the perimeter of everything this time. You don't necessarily have to run this last piece right here on the inside. You can just run your tape to the outside of this, which I'm going to do. So you can see I'm just kind of skipping this part. 
to just go to this part instead. Okay, so I'm just laying my other one down for the other side of the facing here. And I'm gonna start over here. Finding my hash marks here. Just start placing my pattern down. The great thing about using double side tape is if your facing lands in the wrong spot, you can just peel it up and stick it down again. You could also use double sided tape around the inside edge of the window. This may help reduce the number of wrinkles when sewing. Okay, so for my zipper line, I'm going to fold this back and just kind of follow this arc. And it may not be exactly where you're going to put the zipper line anyways, because we're going to hold the zipper up to it and kind of see what the zipper wants to do. Continue to trace along the line in the pattern until the line is completed on the glass. You're just trying to make sure it's gonna lay close to flat. It's gonna have a little bit of a wrinkle on the inside of it when you do this, when you run this arc. We'll continue adjusting the zipper until we get it as close to that line as possible. But I actually think that this is okay. The line that I actually made is pretty good. Well, let's just go ahead and follow the zipper line right down the center. We'll also straighten the line at the bottom where the door is. Now we'll install our slider onto our zipper. We want to make sure that the teeth and the fat end of the zipper are both facing up. There we go. Once the slider is installed, we'll push it all the way to the other end and push the bubble that we created by pulling the zipper apart off of that other end. And we're now ready to install the zipper into our window. Okay, so we're gonna mark here where this is gonna stop. When installing the zipper, it's important to make sure that the raised side of the zipper teeth are down against the glass or else you'll have your zipper on backwards. So I can pretty much follow just the window right here, it looks like. If I stay right up against the window for the beginning part, that's probably going to be okay. So we'll do some reversing. We'll continue sewing down the length of the zipper, checking to make sure that we're still following that line we put on our glass earlier. We accidentally missed filming the part where we pushed the zipper slider past our presser foot. What you want to do is bury your needle in the fabric, raise your presser foot, push the slider past it, then lower your presser foot and continue to sew. When we come to the end of the panel, we'll want to make sure to do some reversing here. Okay. Okay, so now we're sewing the inside of the zipper in the exact same manner. We're just kind of making sure around the corners here, or the curve, that we're pushing flat as much as we can. Sailrite recommends sewing with the zipper on top. This will allow you to more easily flatten out any wrinkles if they do occur. I'm just going to go past a little bit here in reverse and flip it over to the other side. We cut out a small 2 by one inch piece of scrap fabric and we're going to use it as a zipper stop here down at the bottom. We'll install this by simply sewing in forward and reverse a few times to make sure it's held in place. 
We'll install the stops on the other side in a later step. In this next chapter, we'll be sewing the facing around the inside edge. So before I put my binding around the edge here, I'm actually gonna cut where the zipper is gonna be. And I'm gonna do that because I want the binding to seal where the zipper is gonna stop. I'm actually even gonna cut off some of this here. You can hot knife it as well, but it doesn't matter. It's gonna be hid. And I'm just gonna go right down the center of where my zipper's gonna be. Now we'll just cut following the center of the zipper teeth all the way around our arc for our zipper. Stopping at the end right before we get to the end stop. Okay, let's see how our zipper does with this. Works pretty well. Okay, so before I put my binding on, I'm actually gonna mark about an inch and three quarters down for all of where my Velcro is gonna go. And I'm gonna do that because most of this is gonna get covered up if not. So, you're just gonna go straight down from here, and make a mark. <clears throat> we'll mark one and three quarter inches in on all of our hash marks for our Velcro around the perimeter of the window. All right, so I'm gonna sew the inside of my window. Obviously, I'm gonna stop and start where the zipper is here. I'm just gonna back up to my stitch. And then I'm just gonna sew along the border here, just inside my foot. We added an interfacing to our window panel, which isn't really necessary in our situation since we didn't use basting tape around the inside edge. If we did include basting tape around the inside edge, it would be necessary since the basting tape would show on the inside of our window panel. We'll continue sewing around the perimeter, smoothing the fabric out as we go to reduce the number of wrinkles in our panel. Using basting tape around this inside edge would have most likely helped reduce the wrinkles. When we reach the end, we'll sew right up to the stitch holding our zipper in place and then do some back tacking. Coming up next, we'll be sewing the binding. I'm just gonna walk it here for a second. I'm gonna reverse back on my walk. And then just start putting my, my binding If you on notice there. here, Kenny is trying to keep the fabric fed into the middle section, but he's also paying attention to where the fabric exits. This is actually the best way to do it. So you should try to keep your fabric in the middle section, but watch the exiting point. It's a little bit. Okay. I feel like I need to be out a little bit further. You want to make sure the fabric is pushed into the fold by the exiting point to get the best results possible when sewing binding. Ooh. Coming up to this inside curve, which can be very difficult to sew with a binder. Kenny's going to have to sew to the center of this curve, and then most likely pull the binder back and sew it freehand in order to get around this inside curve. You may even have to trim it to make it a more gradual inside curve in order to get the binding on. Okay, so I needed to trim some of this away because that's a hard curve to go, and I'm actually gonna take it out of my guide. We'll slowly sew around this curve after we trimmed it. Notice we pulled our binder back so we can sew this section by hand.
Now maybe put my guy back. Now that we're around that curve, we can put the binder back into position and finish sewing around our window panel. We already trimmed the binding to size and Kenny is now going to remove the binder so we can finish sewing by hand since the zipper is too large to fit through the throat of the binder. And we'll do some reversing at the end. We cut out a 1 by 2 inch piece of scrap fabric and we're going to use this as a stop for our zipper. We're going to apply basting tape, peel it off, and attach it to the end of our zipper, then sew it in place. We'll sew back and forth across this stop a few times to lock it in place. Next up, sewing the hook and loop. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure everywhere I can put Velcro is gonna be okay. And it looks like a, I'm gonna have to move this over. There's actually a little bar there. Um, and then realistically, there should be one up here in the corner. Oops. Let's come down with it a little bit more. It's a good idea to take your window panel back to the side by side before you install your hook and loop. Okay, so I'm just going to figure out how much of my hook and loop Velcro I need to get around. And you definitely want to put the loop at the top and put the hook at the bottom. And I'm just going to make sure that's like two and a half inches probably. Pinch it and make a mark on both sides to cut it. Now that we've marked it, we'll take it back to the table and show you how long our hook and loop are. Okay, there's my mark. I'm just going to cut it there, so I know everything needs to be this long now. About six inches, five and a half inches. So we're going to do everything five and a half inches. We'll cut enough hook and loop for all of our attachment points. Okay, so I've got all of my Velcro tabs put together for every single spot. Just make sure I have everyone covered, and I do. So now we're going to sew. Okay, so you want the loop at the top going over the rail. This makes it way easier to put on. And then I'm just going to make sure on this side that I'm past. And I can feel it that I'm in the right spot. I'm going to shorten my stitch to about a three, two and a half. Just a couple times back and forth. We're nice and strong attached there, so next one. Same thing, make sure your loop is at the top. Coming up, we'll be installing the snaps in our side-by-side. -side. Now we'll take our window over to the side-by-side -side and start installing it using the hook and loop. We'll show you this in triple time. So it looks like we are ready to go ahead and mark where our snaps are. These had previous snaps 
in them from before, so we're just gonna use these holes. All right, so I just turned up my pattern or my cover a little bit. I'm just gonna reinstall these snaps. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my easy snap set and put my spikes in. Why did I have such an easy time with them the other day? We'll continue to put these easy fits on each one of our screw studs. Using these easy fit pin sockets will allow us to get the perfect positioning for our panel. So now that I have my spikes set, I kinda wanna be leery of what my window's doing here. I almost want to pull it so it's bubbling out some, like that, just because I feel like that helps the zipper run a little bit better. Notice Kenny just pushes his window panel onto the easy fit pin socket. This will give us perfect positioning and we can pull tightly to get the perfect fit on our window. This also marks the exact position we want our snap, so it's easy to install the snaps. We're gonna go ahead and pull this off and remove our spikes. <clears throat> and we're gonna start in the center again. our snap tool. <clears throat> to insert these in the snap tool, this is the top button. It goes up here in the top. It's your bottom socket. Is that the socket? Mm -hmm. We'll continue to install the rest of the snaps in the same manner. My zipper is getting caught up a little bit on my plastic, so. I'm just gonna trim away a little bit, maybe about a quarter of an inch, a little bit under that, I guess. You can actually see the scratch line right there where it's hanging up on the zipper a little bit. Look at that, folks. fully functioning. We were able to create both of the side curtains and the back curtain using one sheet of vinyl window material from Sailrite. Here's a look at our finished window on the side-by-side. -side. We want to say thank you to Kenny Sims from Sims Upholstery for collaborating with Sailrite on this project. If you're interested in finished UTV enclosure panels, you can contact him using the information provided on the screen. Coming up, the list of tools and materials we use to complete this project. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of when new videos come available. I'm Seth Grant from all of us here at Sailrite. Thanks for watching.